All right, let's get more on the agriculture business and Monsanto's growth strategy with Kevin McNew, commodity broker and manager at Green Hedge. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Michelle. Pleasure to be here. Kevin, let's, Kevin, let's focus on these earnings. Monsanto's profit falling 25% in the second quarter. Why such a big drop? Yeah, the real story is low commodity prices. This is systemic not only in the U.S., but globally as we enter a phase of the commodity cycle that is just burdensome supplies and low, low prices, and Monsanto is not able to escape that problem. Well, Monsanto is saying that farmers are cutting back on spending. What are the big factors behind this? Well, that's true. I mean, farmers are getting pinched right now, and, you know, they still have to spend to grow a crop and they're getting ready to plant that crop in 2016 facing the lowest commodity prices they've seen in over a decade and farmers we talk to and work with say that you know they're just not seeing the big price discounts from Monsanto and other companies to compensate for these lower commodity prices we are hearing about some special discounts and and last minute deals but overall farmers are stuck in the middle here uh, with low commodity prices and input prices that are not falling as fast as the raw commodity prices are. Well, Kevin, we have been talking about a general plunge in commodity prices. Uh, we've seen that in oil, we've seen that in metals, and that makes sense as economic growth flows down, especially in China. It's understandable why building and growth materials are on the decline, but it's still the same amount of people that need to be fed, if not more. So why are we seeing the slump in soft commodities like grain and corn. Right. You know, we have to go back to 2012 when we had the biggest uh, record high prices in global, global grains around the world. And that was really triggered by several factors. One, you know, strong demand, uh, especially from China, especially from the biofuel segment in the U.S. economy. And at the same time, we had droughts that hit the U.S and some other key players. Now, since that 2012 record high, farmers, not only in the U.S., but around the world, have responded in mass, producing year upon year of record large crops. In fact, this afternoon, after the markets closed, we got a report from USDA's Ag Attaché that said South America next year will produce yet another record on top of the record they are just now harvesting in South America. So it's just more and more commodity supplies than there is existing demand at this time. All right, oversupply, and, and that probably explains why Monsanto shares are down over 11% year to date. Monsanto also saying it's no longer pursuing a deal to buy Syngenta. So what is behind that, and what is Monsanto's strategy moving forward? Right, you know, uh, Monsanto did go aggressively after Syngenta, but Syngenta uh, backed out at the last minute and it ended up getting bought by Kim China. So Monsanto in their call today really stressed that they are not looking for major M&A acquisitions going forward. They're looking for what they call partnerships, collaborations with other chemical companies. And they also stress, Michelle, this integration of what they call data sciences into their spectrum of servicing farmers. So they have biology in terms of seed development. They are looking to partner and collaborate with chemistry or chemical companies, and they want to embed in those programs data sciences, like their acquisition of Climate Corp several years ago. So they're looking to really foster an environment that maximizes earnings potentials on that acre of land that every farmer grows and hopefully will buy Monsanto products. Well, Kevin, here's some trouble heading Monsanto's way. Burkina Faso's Cotton Association seeking $84 million in compensation from Monsanto, saying that that genetically modified cotton led to a drop in quality. What is your take on that? And, and do you anticipate more of these issues with the GM seeds hitting Monsanto? Yeah, I, I think it's unfortunate that, um, you know, Monsanto really sees this as an ongoing struggle if you're a shareholder of Monsanto. But this is not the end of the story. You know, Monsanto has brought this technology into the marketplace in the last 20 years, and, and we have seen more and more resistance, not only from governments, but also from consumers in terms of these genetically modified ingredients going into the food supply. And so I don't think this is the end of the story for Monsanto. I think they have a tough road to hoe. Uh, in, in these, these lit legal issues. They also have a very tough road at home in the U.S. where genetic uh, modification and labeling is becoming a hot topic. Vermont is set to uh, 
start having genetically modified labeling as of July 1. Other, or other companies are starting to say they are going to ban GMOs, like for example, Chipotle. Uh, General Mills has said they would start labeling as well. So while, while Monsanto has focused on the farmer and, and how they maximize value for the farmer, the end result of that food product is going to the consumer. And the consumer is asking, is that product safe? Well, let's focus on, on that because, as you say, more and more regulations are being passed requiring GMO foods to be marked. So much importance globally on organic and sustainable. So what is the future of a large agribusiness moving forward, and how much does the consumer preference play into this? Well, I think it's going to have a big. I think it's going to have a big uh, driver in in the next 20 years for agriculture. The last 20 years has really been driven by large agribusinesses, efficiency, large volumes, and and farms that are specialized in the growing of one or two major commodities. Going forward, I think consumers are starting to drive the food bus a little more, asking the question, where does my food come from? Is it safe? And so that means they want to have more of an intimate relationship in a transaction with the original source of that food product. So we are seeing more farm to consumer types of transactions. And I, and I don't think this is a fluke. I think this is a trend that will continue because quite frankly, I think large agribusiness has somewhat failed the US consumer in their food demand desires. All right, thanks for your insights. Kevin McNew, commodity broker and manager at Green Hedge.